The Seaman Company fiber termination process uses a highly reliable acrylic adhesive and polish method featuring our light speed brand activated cured adhesive and has proven to produce superb repeatable results for long term reliable performance. Seaman offers three standard connector styles for use with this method. The buffer determination process is identical for SC, ST, and LC style connectors. For clarity, the SC connector is the primary connector shown throughout this video using a 900 micron buffered fiber. Before beginning the termination, prepare a clean, dust free work area and verify that all required tools are available. The Lightspeed Toolkit plus the Lightspeed Consumables Kit will be required for proper termination of the SC, ST, or LC connector. If using the LC connector, you will also need the LC upgrade kit containing the LC polishing puck and the LC microscope head. The LC torch is also included for use with the jacketed style terminations not covered here. Note that the F-Term L2 tool kit includes empty dispensers for the water and alcohol. Apart from the limited supply of alcohol soap pads provided in the consumables kit, both dispensers will require filling prior to termination. The alcohol dispenser is provided empty because of federal shipping restrictions. For best results, it is highly recommended that 99% reagent grade isopropyl alcohol and distilled or deionized water be used. All connectors consist of several components. A strain relief boot sized for the 900 micron buffered fibers, the connector body, and the dust cap. The FC duplex connector, as shown here, also includes the outer housing and duplexing clip. Prepare the adhesive syringe by unthreading the cap and installing the metal syringe tip provided. The nose of the jacket stripper tool may be used to assist in unthreading difficult syringe caps. After exposing an adequate length of buffered strands from the cable, the first step is to install the strain relief boot. Perhaps one of the most commonly forgotten steps, this can certainly be frustrating if discovered after polishing several connectors to perfection. Slide the 900 micron boot onto the buffered strand, narrow end first until it is out of the way. Using the template card provided, choose the proper template for the connector being terminated. The LC template is on one side and the SC and ST on the opposite side of the card. Using the marker pen provided, measure and mark the buffer strip length from the end of the fiber as shown on the template. Using the buffer stripping tool, remove the measured section of buffer coating including the protective undercoating. To avoid breaking the fiber, remove the buffer in at least two sections. Carefully inspect each fiber after stripping to be sure the protective coating was stripped off during this process. With some fiber types, under certain conditions, the clear protective coating may not strip off along with the buffer. Notice the partial protective coating remaining on this fiber after stripping. Sometimes mistaken to be the fiber cladding, this coating must be completely removed for the fibers to fit in the connector. After stripping, use a dry lint-free wipe to clean the fibers and remove any remaining remnants of the coating. Avoid touching or contaminating the fiber after it is cleaned. Prepare the primer bottle by inserting it into the stand provided and uncap. Always inspect the date shown on the label of both the adhesive and primer to be sure the product has not expired. When not in use, both the primer and adhesive should be capped and stored within the temperature range indicated. Dip the entire exposed length of fiber, including some portion of the buffer material, into the light speed primer and place in a protected area. Be careful not to break the fiber by contacting the bottom of the primer bottle. Notice the minimum depth line marked on the label as reference point to prevent this from occurring. The buffered style termination is identical for the SC, ST, or LC connector styles. First, remove the dust cap from the connector and insert the adhesive syringe tip into the connector housing until it seats firmly inside. Inject the light speed adhesive until a small dot of the adhesive appears at the ferrule tip. Also inject a small amount of adhesive into the back end of the connector. 
This ensures bonding of the buffer to the connector, strengthening the termination. Be careful not to overfill to prevent a backflow of adhesive. Next, insert the fiber into the connector until the buffer bottoms out inside the housing. Be sure the fiber is being inserted into the center of the connector and not the space between the inner and outer body. If the fiber seems to be catching within the inner body, it may help to rotate the connector during insertion to assist in guiding the fiber into the ferrule. Once the primer coated fiber touches the adhesive, the carrying process will start and fiber insertion will become noticeably more difficult if not fully inserted within 10 to 15 seconds. Allow at least 30 seconds cure time before proceeding. After the adhesive has cured, you are now ready to score the excess fiber using the scribe tool. First inspect the blade to ensure it is clean and in good condition. The sapphire blade is double-edged and may be reversed if one side has been damaged. Hold the blade of the scribe tool flat against the ferrule tip with the beveled edge facing up. Carefully score the fiber on one side close to the intersection of the ferrule tip and fiber. Do not use excess pressure to prevent fiber breakage and uneven fractures. If the fiber stub breaks off during the scoring process, you may continue with the polishing process, but it is possible that the glass may have fractured down into the ferrule tip slightly. Inspection with the microscope after polishing will reveal this result. Be sure to keep track of your fiber pieces. They are difficult to see, and if these glass fibers are not properly disposed of, they may cause serious injury. Also remember to clean any adhesive off the blade of your scribe tool before it dries. If properly scored, the excess fiber can be removed with a straight, non-twisting pull. Deposit the fiber piece in a safe place, such as onto a piece of the electrical tape or into the debris container included. If the fiber does not readily pull off, repeat the previous step, scoring on opposite side of fiber. Prior to polishing, the boot may be slid into place to provide additional support during the subsequent polishing steps. Be careful sliding the boot into place. Some connector styles may be more difficult than others. Gently work the boot onto the back of the connector, being careful not to slip and break the buffered fiber where it enters the connector. Also be careful not to bump or brush the end face of the ferrule tip before polishing. The small fiber nub is still somewhat vulnerable to being fractured. Using the gray 12 micron film, perform an air polish. Gently brush the ferrule tip against the dull side of the polishing film in a figure eight fashion to wear the small fiber protrusion into a smoother, more polishable tip. Continue until the tip is almost flush with the ferrule. The number of revolutions will vary dependent upon the length of the fiber stub left after cleaving. Prepare the polishing pad and puck by cleaning with an alcohol wipe to remove any debris that may adversely affect the polish. Position the pad onto a flat surface with the rubber side facing up. Place the pink 3 micron film onto the polishing pad with the glossy side of film down and remove any air that may be trapped between the pad and film. Add a minimum of three or four drops of distilled deionized water onto the section of film to be used. Carefully insert the connector ferrule into the appropriate polishing puck and gently place onto the pad for LC connectors, use the puck provided with LC upgrade kit. Avoid bumping the unpolished ferrule tip on the puck or crushing the tip down onto the pad. Gently grip the connector, apply medium pressure, and polish the tip in a 50 to 75 millimeter or 2 to 3 inch figure 8 pattern for 25 to 30 revolutions. For best results, avoid over polishing or using excessive pressure. To optimize optical performance of the connectors while maximizing polishing film life of the pink and purple films, use separate sections of the film per 14 connectors. Using five sections of the film, as shown here, assures a life of at least 70 connectors per film. Variables such as amount of adhesive on tip, size of figure eight, and polishing pressure can also affect film life. Next, remove the connector from the polishing puck and clean the ferrule and puck to prevent particles from transferring onto the next film. It is also important to thoroughly clean the surface of film 
prior to storing to ensure ideal conditions for the next connector. Allowing the film to dry without cleaning off the debris can adversely affect subsequent connectors. Now replace the pink film with a purple one micron film. Prepare as done with the pink film. Lossy side of film down. Remove any trapped air. Add several drops of water and continue polishing with medium pressure again for 25 to 30 revolutions. Again, remove the connector from the polishing puck and clean the ferrule, puck, and surface of film. The final polish with the white finishing film is required for single mode and recommended for multi-mode 50 micron connectors that are going to be used for high bandwidth laser optimized applications. Replace the purple film with the white finishing film and prepare as done previously with several drops of water. The finishing film differs from other films in that each section of this film can only be used one time. Choose an unused section of this film and continue polishing but use light pressure for 25 to 35 cycles. Also limit the size of the figure eights to 1.5 inches in height. To optimize optical performance of the connectors while maximizing polishing film life of the white finishing film, use a separate section of film for each connector. Dividing the film into 16 quadrants will assure maximum film life. Prior to inspecting the connector with a microscope, clean with an alcohol wipe followed by a dry lint-free wipe. Prepare the microscope with the universal head for SC and ST connectors or the LC head for the LC connector. The microscope is 400 power and unlike the typical 100 power microscopes will provide a detailed view of the resultant polish. This level of magnification is very helpful in identifying a poorly polished connector which is required to ensure optimum insertion loss and return loss performance. For proper use of the microscope, reference the instructions included with the scope. Fully insert the ferrule into the microscope, depress the button to illuminate the end phase, and inspect the fiber to ensure there are no scratches, voids, or chips. If the polish is acceptable, place the dust cap on the connector until your network connection is ready to be established. If any portion of the fiber has fractured down below the ferrule surface, it will appear as a dark region through the microscope. If the fracture is not too far below the ferrule surface, a recovery polish can be used to polish down the ferrule surface and fiber flush with each other. This procedure requires the bronze colored 6 micron recovery film, part number FT-PF6. This film is sold separately and not included in the consumables kit. Using the 6 micron recovery film, perform a pad polish step identical to the initial one, then continue as normal starting with the pink 3 micron film. Be sure to clean between steps to prevent transfer of debris between films. For larger jobs, consider purchasing additional polishing pads and pucks to minimize setup and cleaning time. SC duplex connectors will require one additional step, the housing and duplexing clip assembly. Insert the connector body into the housing by orienting the chamfered corners of the connector relative to the key on the housing as shown here. Grasp the boot and push firmly. The connector should snap into the housing. Join two simplex SE housings to create a duplex connector by snapping together with a black duplex clip. Use the A and B designation markings on the duplexing clip to identify proper polarity. SE duplex connectors can be uncoupled by simply squeezing the front of the duplex assembly together or with a small screwdriver inserted as shown. Thank mm -hmm. you.